Here I'd like to show you the um, anatomy of the eye so that um, it can remind you of the most important features um, with reference to the clinical work um, that we do. So here is the sclera, the main kind of structural sac of the globe. Um, it's holding the, um, the eye and it's the, the kind of the white of the eye. That um, then reaches down to the optic nerve um, and the um, optic disc as you see when you um, look with a retinal examination or a fundic examination. Here at the, the front side is the um, cornea which just um, bulges forwards a little from the um, globular shape of the, of the globe. Um, next I'm going to look at the uvea so we have the iris initially then coming to the ciliary body which forms up the anterior uvea and then that is continuous with the choroid which goes to the fundus at the back and then obviously the same on the the ventral aspect the iris the ciliary body and then to the choroid The retina is the, the last layer at the fundus. Um, this is made up of um, both the tapetum um, and the retinal pigment epithelium. And it's in this layer where we've got the blood vessels that feed into that optic disc. In the corner of the iridocorneal angle is the pectinate ligaments. That's what you can see on gonioscopy and is very important in an examination of patients with glaucoma. The lens itself is suspended in the, um, the middle of the, the globe um, by the zonules, which um, come from the ciliary body. And it's the, the stretch and the muscle from um, those areas that can change the shape of the lens. Next, we're looking at the conjunctival fornix, um, which arises and sits um, just from the limbus and then goes round on the, the globe and then on the underside of the eyelid itself. Um, it covers both sides of the third eyelid um, and then becomes um, continuous with the, the skin itself. It shows that that conjunctival fornix is a kind of a fixed area. You're not going to lose anything around the back of the eye. Um, for example, the contact lens wearers that worry that you're going to lose your contact lens. There's nowhere for it to go. Here is the, the bony orbit on both the, um, the dorsal and the ventral aspect. And we've got the cilia just on the dorsal eyelid. Um, in our pets, it, they're not in the lower eyelid. We have the um, meibomium gland, um, which form a row all the way along the eyelids. Um, and you can visualize the, the orifices of these when you look um, in close detail at the eyelids. And then here we've got the orbicularis oculi muscle. That is an important muscle um, for um, that's responsible for uh, blepharospasm, for the squinting. Um, of the eyes so that's um, on the lids there and then here we've got the levator palpebri muscle which is responsible for lifting the eyelids that's innervated by the ocular motor nerve um, very much like um, the ocular motor nerve is responsible for the um, innervation of the iris there as well so responsible for the pupillary light reflex here I show you the um, cartilage of the third eyelid um, and the nictitans gland at the bottom. Um, there's also two glands around the base of the cilia, um, just cranial to it is the gland of mole, which is a modified sweat gland, and the gland of zeiss, just caudal to it, which is a sebaceous gland. And then here, these little glands that I'm 
um, drawing at the base of the conjunctiva. Those are goblet cells. Um, these can particularly be affected by um, the herpes virus in cats um, and can be responsible for a reduction in the, the tear film. And then last of all, we'll just go and summarise all those areas um, for you to uh, have a look and remember those areas that we've talked about.